Hello, um, this is Daniel Chang, and this is Art 170 Digital Painting Class at Rio Hondo College for uh, March 14th, 2020. This is the spring semester. Um, I'm broadcasting this uh, through YouTube because we have been told to uh, stay at home and be safe um, away from COVID-19. So um, here we go. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about art. Um, where we left off, we had a lot of students with uh, student portfolios and or portfolio pieces. And then our plan now for this week is to template those portfolio pieces. Now I totally understand that without the use of Photoshop you're not going to be able to do the same stuff that I'm about to do. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the alternative would be for a analog version of this so I may have to come up with a alternative assignment until then. But um, for now, um, I'm just going to teach you how to do it in Photoshop. If you can figure out how to do something quite similar with your pieces, dragging and dropping your images into um, a image file, um, then maybe you can do it in the other paint programs. Um, yeah, this is actually what Photoshop was designed for, was photo manipulation and editing and so putting your pieces together and organizing it um, for those who have uh, experience with uh, graphic design programs like Illustrator this might be easier for you to do in Illustrator but I'm just gonna walk through the steps of sort of what a good portfolio page looks like so let's look at some really really uh, good professional portfolios that are out there I just quickly looked up some stuff um, you know that may deal with uh, how we want to lay out our portfolios uh, right here this is uh, what we would call um, a portfolio for visual development artists who are basically really early concept artists you know uh, for uh, animation uh, visual development happens during what's called the blue sky phase where not a whole lot's been nailed down maybe they have like a rough idea of what the story is about but the story is definitely developing uh, at the same time that these uh, artists are making their art so the blue sky phase a lot of stuff is in the air they're still trying to find their style and you could see some amazing pieces here a lot of shape exploration you'll see here on the blue sky phase and I'm sort of thinking about this in terms of uh, what we did for our um, lasso tool um, uh, exercise so let's just I don't know you know you could kind of see how how this is one piece but then they the artist has shown their um, their process right they went from uh, a drawing to something that was tonal maybe a color study and then did the final piece that sort of combined the two together um, yeah there's a lot of wonderful examples of uh, visual development type portfolios and they lay out their portfolios very nicely but you'll see um, that on all of them you'll want to have you know your name you know um, uh, well this one just is visual development but you probably want to have a blurb in there uh, that says like what your piece is you know like a short little description not too long you know um, and then you'll need a way for people to contact you either by email or if you have a website direct them to your website um, that way you can get work in case people um, 
are interested in in what they're saying here you know okay so here over here this is like a nice little blurb right here carnival of the lost child in quotes which probably means that's what the story is and then um environment and design shows like hey look i'm focusing on just the environments here don't judge me by any characters you might see judge me by the environments uh over here has the name of the artist and then th an email so that's pretty standard um across the board you probably don't want to put in your phone number i think people used to put in their phone number prior to emails um uh being uh widely used uh, but, um, you know, um, that was back when people were handing their portfolios in in person, right? Um, so you know that nobody else but the potential client has your contact info. Nowadays, when you put things out on the World Wide Web, now you're going to get phishing scams and all sorts of other kind of things. You're going to get a lot of spam mail into going into that email as soon as you put it out there but there is you know you you do want to have a way for them to contact you if they're interested um and usually like a building up a website for yourself is definitely like one of the ways to do that um either having a art station page or you know uh, a lot of students like having deviant art pages um so so that's one kind of portfolio um, another kind of portfolio would be more along the lines of the the fantasy illustration portfolios um, now the difference between an illustration type portfolio uh, versus you know the viz dev portfolio the illustration portfolios are made for print and so a lot of times the formats are also different but again you you want to have the name of the artist over here and you want to have possibly a little bit of a description uh, next to it I would still suggest that you put down contact information like an email or something maybe underneath that but you can see how um, you know some of these magic the gathering kind of things uh, have have a little descriptor on the bottom there um, for the formatting um, a lot of these uh, places that you know they 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 bought the piece they they commissioned the piece so they'll have like copyright wizards of the coast somewhere on there or something like that if it was actually a published piece um so then we can go over here and you could see and as an example of like um you know if you've ever heard of uh spectrum magazine uh so it's a really cool book that um still gets published these days um and it's just nothing but fantasy and sci-fi illustrations um you should look that up uh, hopefully they have some spectrum magazines maybe in the library or you know well when i say magazine it's not like a thin thing it's like an annual big hard cover or soft cover book um you might be able to find it in a bookstore or something like that in the sci-fi book section usually hopefully you can flip through it and just get a sense of like the kind of work that's being put out there uh, over here they'll have the artist name underneath the piece they'll have a description of you know what what title this thing's from um, they'll even talk about medium like this one says something about oil and um, the size of the piece who the client was if you know if there was a client and also who the art director was like basically who their point of contact was with the um, publisher um, that kind of told them what they wanted and told them to make changes here and there um, so that's another way that you can format your portfolios um, you know I could flip through some of these they're really good um, you know sometimes you might want to do like a full pager uh, if you've got a huge collection of pieces, you might actually want to start thinking about your pieces, um, like how they would look uh, together like this, you know. Um, don't put like a, I would not recommend like right here on the left hand side, I would not recommend putting four pieces like that all together. It just becomes a wall and it kind of gets lost. You kind of want 
your pieces to stand out especially like what if like i don't know what if this artist worked all day on this one well this one just got lost in the mix right so you don't want that um over yeah so a lot of different formats a lot of different layouts that are possible but the the point is to make it look clean to make it look professional um and also for them to have a way to contact you because I've heard stories in the past where people uh, find a piece online that they like, but there's no way of contacting the artist, and and they just kind of steal it, right? Um, the other thing too is, um, you know, if you have some kind of a signature on your piece, you know, maybe, and make your signature legible, because if it's not legible they're not going to uh know who did it you know um and and there's always going to be the jerks out there that are just going to crop out your signature and try to use your piece for themselves or they'll try to paint it out or something that's really devious though any case um let's go back to photoshop just give you an idea so let's just start off with one of these for now um probably since we're talking about illustration we could start off with this illustration piece done by Aaron uh, Aaron Malcolm we can figure out a way to template this I know Aaron probably got a newer version of this that that looks even better but um, that's the one I've got on my file so that's what I'll use um, to start off I'm just going to make a new oh yeah what did I do just now I went to file I went to new right and over here you can type in the inches and uh, how many pixels per inch so I'm just gonna write 11 by 17 which is sort of my standard go-to at 300 dpi um, uh, I will have to warn you that when you turn in this assignment I'm going to ask you for a lower resolution version of it just so that my emails do not get crazy I could show you how to lower the resolution as well but you'll want to have two copies for yourself one that is a regular size like you know ready for print in case you ever want to print and then one that you know you want that small that you can put online and you know send over to me because it's you know it's, um, a more appropriate size for emails uh, so first off you notice this background is just white it's stark white and it's going to be overwhelming um, to look at so I would suggest that you um, lower down the brightness of the background to start with you go to hue uh, let me see image adjust hue saturation the hotkey for this is control U so you can hit control U and also then this menu will pop up you'll probably notice that this um, interface I have is going to look a little different than um, some of the newer versions of Photoshop. This one is just the last version of Photoshop before they went into the cloud and so I just quickly snagged that one up, bought that so that I can not be in the cloud but I think eventually I'm gonna have to buy the CCC whatever the Creative Cloud versions. Um, so I go to hue saturation and what I did was on this slider on lightness I just kind of lowered the lightness down just a bit so that I have sort of a neutral gray background to work off of so it's not too bright it's not too dark you could probably go too dark later but let's just see what we get okay so um, let's start off from a neutral background and then work from there say okay and now I'm going to bring in this piece that Aaron has illustrated right here whoa Aaron's piece is actually bigger than my piece <laughs> okay that's good um, it's always big better to make your pieces larger as the original piece um, and then you can shrink it down as needed if you start off small there's no way for you to really up res it other than to do a bunch of repainting and there's software out there that helps you up res stuff but man it is it is not great oh wait I need to talk my way through this stuff okay all right what am I doing here I, I was resizing the piece so that I could fit on the the 
this canvas here. Um, so what you do is you hit Control T, and depending on the version of Photoshop you have, you either just drag along the uh, corner there without you know without holding down Shift, uh, and that'll um, that'll uh, shrink it down uniformly. Or in the older versions of Photoshop, you hold down Shift, and that will help you shrink it down uniformly. If you're not sh shrinking down uniformly, it'll look something like this. It'll be all squished or whatever. Um, as soon as you uh, switch back to the uniform scale, it'll it'll pop right back like that. Um, you do not want to bring this piece all the way to the edges like how I'm doing right here. Like that is generally not a good idea because I don't know there's like no space to breathe there's you know what we call framing so like you're almost using the you're going to be using the the background color as sort of a frame think of it like it's in a gallery space and that that background color is the wall so you kind of want some context for which your piece is uh, presented so I generally try to give it a healthy gap on the top, bottom, and sides. Uh, and then maybe you can have a little bit of room over here on the side for if you want to write something down for it. So something like that is fine. Um, one thing you can do to kind of, you know, go with the gallery analogy. Like, let's say, for example, if this was hanging up on a wall in a gallery, what would happen? They would light it from the top and then there would be a little bit of a drop shadow underneath it. So that's something you can add in Photoshop. So you go, you click on the layer that has your piece on there and then you go down to FX. You see this little button down here that says FX, you click on that. And when you click on that, you could choose one of these options here. And I'm gonna choose drop shadow down here and this menu pops up. You could see that nothing really shows up yet, but that's because I have, have to offset the distance of the shadow from, from the origin, and I need to size up the uh, shadow. You could see that when I size it up, it starts blurring, which is good, you know, because, you know, a harsh shadow just I don't know, it just kind of looks. So you want something in between, something that that really pops the image from the background. Um, and then if you up, uh, if you increase the spread, it'll just bring it back to a hard edge if you max it out. And so that's kind of how you play around with it. You play around with it between using spread and size. Um, if you don't want this drop shadow to be that big, but really offset, you can. You just up the distance by decre and inc decreasing the size, and then you can lower the spread down a little bit and to kind of soften that, you know. Um, but in general, I like to up the size of it slightly so that it just kind of blurs. I don't want any of these values to be uh, darker or, you know, higher contrast than the values that are on my actual piece, right? Uh, and and lastly, you can actually lower the opacity of this overall, which I'll do, because then this just kind of fades and just becomes like a little sub-note as if, like, to say, if this was actually hanging up on a wall, what kind of a shadow would it cast? Okay, and you can actually change the shadow angle, too, with this little angle, angle icon. You could see how... I can make the light look like it's coming from the top right, and now the shadows are on the bottom left. If I have the shadow uh, angle of light coming from the top left, now the shadows are back to where they were on the bottom and right. Okay, I'm gonna hit OK. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then you want to um, maybe have you know your name typed in. So in this in case, I'm just going to type in um, Aaron. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type in Aaron. Whoa. Is 
sorry if I spelled your name wrong. Let's see. Okay. And this, so we'll have that. I'm going to bring it back to um, the Move tool in Photoshop. I clicked on that. Um, right now, this font, I mean, okay, the very important thing is to make this font legible and also kind of clean and professional looking. So I'm trying to go through and look up, you know, different types of fonts that kind of elicit pay me. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that might be nice. You know, it's kind of, you know, modern. I mean, if you go, you know, like there is a tendency, right, with looking at a fantasy piece, there's this tendency, oh, let's go like old school. Let's go with like um, some kind of like a ancient, you know, thing. Well, you can't read that, but um, let's go with like a, uh, let's go with like a, like a old, old, British, old, uh, old English type font or something along those lines, but I don't know. I don't get too fancy with it. it. It's yeah, and don't get too whimsical with it. It's like, like this font juice itc just looks like margarita time or something. You don't necessarily want that either. Um, so look for a font that kind of says. Um, I'm serious as an artist, uh, um, you know, I, I'm a professional and, and I can get the job done on time and, uh, I'm a prof, you know, pay me, you know, I'm, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm expensive. No, um, uh, not yet. <laughs> I will be expensive one day. That's it. Um. Currently, I think this is showing up maybe almost too large right there. Um, so I'm going to shrink this down a little bit to about that size. So Aaron Malcolm, I don't know what your what your uh, email is, but we can uh, next. Uh, let me see. Let me do it on a separate text file because I don't know which one I want to do first but this one you called moon raptor battle so I would probably put that in quotes moon raptor battle oh by the way once you choose a font you pretty much want to stick with that font throughout your portfolio don't be changing it um, don't be changing it all the time because then it just starts looking like 10 people's different portfolios all in one. Um, and also do not try to, um, do not try to change the, the, the fonts all within the same page as well. Having too many fonts on the same page can look kind of, uh, unprofessional as well. Um, I can, oh, by the way, this is bolding it. You can you can italicize it, you can bold it, you can bold and italicize it. Um, I don't know, that that looks good. Yeah, bold and italicize, okay. Moon Raptor Battle, that just kind of tells me, hey, this is under a different category of things. Um, and then, I'm not sure what your email is, but I'm, I'm just gonna be, I don't know, um, I'm just going to make something up, Aaron. E oh, it's still on bold. E dot Malcolm at uh, Aaron Malcolm dot com or something like that. Maybe Aaron Malcolm art dot com. That, that would be, you know, a good type of uh, email, but again, I, it's way too big, um, right here. So first off, don't bold that. You might want to italicize it a little bit, uh, but, uh, don't bold it. And then also you can, you can also change the font size, like right here, instead of going with the, um, transform tool. So this is sort of, hey, publishers, Here's your way of contacting me. 
Uh, I'm available for work and uh, pay me. Um, and so we could maybe do something like this. Huh, how would that look over there? I mean, every artist is going to have their own way of doing things. You know, you might, you wouldn't want this to be butter right up against that because they might mistaken this as being part of the email so you can generally want that email kind of on its own line you know maybe something like this would be great because now that just says you know hey this is my name and then this is my my so I, i'm starting to like this um a lot more um now i'm starting to notice that since i put all this text down here uh, this piece has a lot of empty space up here and over here starting to look crowded, especially with the cast shadow I, or the drop shadow I put on there. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit and move it to the left a little bit. Give me some space, something like that. And that way I can kind of even out some of this stuff so that it's not I don't know. It's it's more of a feeling than than science. I'm sure a graphic design instructor can come in and sort of tell you the science of it all <laughs> if if needed. Um, but I think this email is still too large because you still want the artist's name bigger than the email as well. So I'm just going to go back here and change the size of this email down a little bit that's a little better um, you don't want to shrunk down so much that after you print it out nobody can under you know un even see it um, so and you don't want it you know too close so that people can't read it you know not all not everybody has great vision um, so there's that um, if you have preliminary drawings along the way that you did, like little studies along the way, you can maybe drop them off in here or something like that. Um, let me see if I have any from you, Aaron. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, only if it looks like it's in a different stage of things. Um, so I could maybe use this control T again that's to so that you can transform which means to resize it so I'll hold down shift on a you know on an older version of Photoshop I'll hold down shift so something like this could work right and I probably want to fade this out a little bit so that it does not overwhelm I don't want it to overwhelm the final piece. Again, you want this final piece to really stand out. And you can actually like cheat it a little bit if you wanted to. Um, give it sort of a sepia tone or something like that. So I can go to Image, Adjust, go to Hue Saturation. If you, if you change the different colors on there right now, or if you change the saturation right now, it'll get a little funky because it, it's got nothing to work off of. There's no color on there. Or even if there is a little bit of color, it's only like artifacting. Um, so what you can do, if you don't have any color on your piece and you want color added, you hit this little box here called Colorize, and that'll just put a little bit of a tone over everything. And so here you can, you know, saturate it and and you know play around with the color so you could go with sepia or something like that to make it look like that was a preliminary study Daniel you're cheating I know this fake it till you make it so so something like that to kind of show like hey I had an initial idea that this was going to be a night scene or something like that so that could work as well um, Something else that artists can also do, I think it's too close. I'm going to shrink it down some more. Again, it's not the priority. You know, you kind of just want, like, you kind of want, you know, you go, like, hey, look, I, I don't just jump right into the final thing. I, I'm 
able to work with the art director. I'm willing to take direction if the art director says like, hey, can you add this or that? That's all good by me. Anyways, um, so that's a pretty good page. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try this out. You know, when I have that drop shadow on here, um, I could also add in what's called a stroke. What is a stroke? A stroke is just an outline that's around everything. So if you check that over here, you go here, you can see how large do you want that stroke. If you put the stroke on the outside, it will give you a round corner. If you put it on the inside, it will give you a sharp corner, but it will crop in on your piece. So you kind of want to find a balance of sorts, maybe just a small bit of stroke. And sometimes what a why I'll put in a stroke around the piece. It, again, it kind of feels like you're framing it, but also sometimes like an artist might have a piece, let's say for example, if this was on a um, darker background or something like that. And uh, well, an artist might have a, might have a piece that kind of blends too much into the background. And then um, you, you can actually have, um, you know, a stroke to kind of, you know, make it stand out from blending. So in that instance, I would have like, here, I'll show you. In this instance, I would have lightened up my stroke so that it would be uh, different enough. So then go to this again, double click on that, go to stroke, and ins instead of a black color, you could pick a whiter color. You know, in that instance, I may, I may be picking something like that. Um, know that if you choose a black background, and as cool as that looks, uh, if you ever printed out your piece, that's going to use up a lot of black ink because, you know, it's always printing on top of white paper. So the, the black ink budget is going to go way up, especially if this becomes like a normal thing that goes across all of your pieces. So that's part of the reason why I usually go with like a neutral gray. I mean, you could go with a white, but man, it's um, it's pretty stark. Uh, we could try it. We could try it. Let's see what it looks like with the white background. Yeah, it just feels kind of empty, and I don't know. Um, so, you know, don't go with a background that is too saturated or too crazy. You don't want it to overwhelm your piece, right? You don't want like something that's like super bright like that. Like that blue is more intense than any blue that's in my piece. Um, I don't, I, I would not recommend that. I, I, I would recommend that we keep it fairly neutral. You could put in a little bit of blue if you wanted to. You could put in a little bit of a tan if you wanted to. But I would recommend you go neutral so that across the board, if it were to be the same thing across the board, that it can work for almost anything. This is not necessarily the time to be, s you know, extremely um, creative. Um, although you could, you could be, you could figure out a way to be super creative with this. I'm not entirely sure um, what, you know, like, like this is about as creative as um, some of this stuff can get is like, ooh, okay, I know, I'm going to add a line right here. I mean, that's going to be like the thing that, that separates my portfolio from everybody else. Look at that line. Oh, look at that wonderful line. Something like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's like, you know, um, as much as what I would probably expect. Now, I wouldn't want that line to go right down and hit this letter E, so I'm not sure I, I would, you know, sh either shrink the this this email thing some more or uh, so that it actually fits within the you know line of uh, the letter E you know something like that ah dang it yeah I don't think I can stretch it out anymore but something you know along these lines I if you want that in there I don't really want that line necessarily but just just showing you like wow you know you can get really 
I'm not sure. Maybe maybe you have another somebody who's good with graphic design around you that that can actually uh, help you out with this. Like like would that be kind of cool? You know, having a line on the top and then a line on the bottom that just kind of helps you separate these things. Of course, you know, again, you don't want it necessarily going through your name as well. So so if that were to happen, I would raise it up maybe a little bit. Now, and then raise this one up. Not sure. Maybe raise this one up a little bit. Something like that. You know, would that be kind of cool? Yeah, that might be kind of cool. All right. So um, let me just end the video right here for now. Um, and try to upload this up on YouTube. Thanks, everyone.